Heyo and happy launch day everyone. The brand new Planazoo Conservation Pack launches today and in this video we'll just be doing a quick overview of the pack, I'll summarize my thoughts, and I'll let you know whether or not I think it's worth buying. Let's kick things off with the most interesting part of the pack, that being the scenery. Okay, so the first thing I need to make clear right away about this new scenery pack is that it is on the lighter side as far as other scenery packs go. The conservation pack offers roughly 150 new pieces, quoting them on Steam. Now that does sound like a lot, and for some people it definitely will be. But if you compare that to the previous scenery pack, that being the Europe pack with 250 new pieces, you come to learn that it's definitely a noticeable drop in piece count. I do think there's a reason for this, and I'll get into that after we take a look at the actual scenery itself. So actually getting into the scenery now, you'll see how Frontier made an honest attempt at creating a new building theme just based on the word conservation. Straight up, they had to create a theme from scratch here, and I honestly think they did a good job, giving us a grand mixture of backstage props, farming and gardening materials, 3D printed walls, beautiful new wood pieces and wood panels, new animal signs, and of course, beautiful new foliage. My favorite of all of them is the new vegetables they gave us. I never thought I'd see a day where we'd get a highly detailed piece of cauliflower added into Planet Zoo, yet here we are. I do think they did a great job creating a theme from scratch, and that right there is most likely why we have had a smaller amount of scenery this time. That being because they had to make something original. And ultimately, if you've ever played Planet Zoo seriously before, you would know that building original takes more time and effort to make a finished product, so the same can probably be applied here. At the end of the day, the conservation pack scenery set feels more like quality over quantity, and I'm all for that. I think it's a solid set of scenery to obtain, especially if you want to build more detailed backstages and farms in your zoos. You also just need to know that you're only getting so much of it at the end of the day. Moving on to the animals now, let's first take a look at the Amora Leopard. To summarize the Amora Leopard best, it is just another nice cat addition to Planet Zoo, and really nothing else at the end of the day. It doesn't offer any new animations or behaviors of course, and that's fine, that's to be expected. I'm honestly just happy to say that we have this rare and critically endangered animal officially added into Planet Zoo. The thing is though, every time we get a new cat added to the game, the real meat behind its inclusion is in the model. It's always interesting to see how well they do on the model, because as we've seen in the past, cat models can be very tough to do right in this game. Sometimes they come out fantastic, other times less so. So if the Amore Leopard, at least I and I'm sure lots of other people were sort of holding our breath on how this cat was going to turn out, and I gotta say, not the best, nor the worst. The screenshot they posted of it definitely didn't help, but thankfully it's a lot better looking in game compared to the screenshot, but it's still not perfect. I, my big three issues with it are, for one, the saturation, a more leopard coats tend to be a lot lighter in color than the ones we have in game, and I suspect this is because they were originally using the Jaguars model, which is far more saturated and they just, you know, forgot to turn it down more. Another big issue I have is in the face. It's just not round enough in my opinion, but instead too wide. This issue does vary depending on which angles you look at it, but I just feel like it needs to be more round with puffier cheeks. And last issue I have is more of a minor one, but I just feel like the Amor Leopard Cubs are just too weird looking. Their foreheads are just too noticeably big for my liking. But other than all that, I do think they're a solid addition. Not the best, but not the worst. Some people will really like them, and I'm happy for those people. I just want a few things to be tweaked about this new cat. What's funny is that even though I like the Scimitar Horned Orcs much more than I do the Amor Leopard, I have far less to say about it. Overall, it's just another beautiful new ungulate addition to Planet Zoo. Frontier has really been cracking down on giving us more ungulates this year, and I couldn't be happier with that. The Scimitar Horned Orcs has a fan-freaking-tastic model, cute babies, a cool fighting animation, and a good set of enrichment items. What this new animal gives you above all else is more biodiversity to your African hoofstock, and an extinct in the wild one at that. I'm really happy to say that we can now add them to our zoos. On to the new exhibit animal, we have the beloved Axolotl. Once again, there's not a whole lot to say about this animal. It's got a new environment within the tank to accompany it. It does have a couple new animations and positions in the tank compared to, say, the Danube Preston Newt. My personal favorite being the Yawn. I just think that's absolutely adorable. And of course, the models are great for exhibit animal standards. It's a solid addition to the game that I know many people will love. And can we just talk about the fact that they chose the wild morphs above all else? I love the fact that they did that. 
Second to last, we have the Shavalsky's horse. Right off the bat, I just gotta say that they win all out on this animal, which is not a surprise, seeing as it is the face of the pack. Indifferent to the zebras of Planet Zoo, the Shavalsky's horse has some new animations to it, some new sounds, and an absolutely gorgeous model, quite possibly one of the best they've ever done, which is saying a lot. It feels so right to finally have it in game, and in the 10th pack, a conservation pack nonetheless, just feels symbolic to how far the game has come since November of 2019. And I just want to say that when I first saw this animal emerge from its box in the game for the first time, there was this sense of gracefulness and impressiveness I could just feel from it. That probably sounds cheesy, but I honestly feel like Frontier perfectly captured the awe and wonder found in these last wild horses, so much so that they've quickly become one of my favorite animals in Planet Zoo, and I hope a lot of you end up feeling the same way. Wrapping it up now with the last, probably most anticipated animal of the pack, the Siamangs. A proper gibbon species has finally been added to Planet Zoo, and I honestly believe that Frontier did them a solid. They exhibit new brachiation that can be done on these metal-framed modular enrichment items. I think it's a clever idea, and it was nice enough for Frontier to make a couple blueprint inversions for the players who don't want to have to build these elaborate climbing setups themselves. You just place down these metal frames and they will go crazy on it. They'll brachiate back and forth, sometimes tightrope walking across the bars, they'll climb along the tops, and they'll even just hang there for extended periods of time. And they do all this in their own energetic given way, which is just great to see. It's not perfect of course, and that's to be expected with how janky the arboreal system is in this game, and like, I don't even care that it's a pretty janky system, I'm honestly just happy to say that we have brachiating gibbons in Planet Zoo, regardless of perfectness. On the ground though, they do kind of walk around like little demon people, which is low-key, funny, and scary at the same time, but not too far off from the real-life counterpart. And they do have some co other cool animations, my personal favorite being this one. Overall, Frontier did a good job bringing such an iconic species to life in Planet Zoo, and as I said before, it's not perfect, and that's okay. It's a tough species to bring to life, which is probably why we've had to wait as long as we have, and I think people in the community are going to be quite satisfied with the Siamangs in Planet Zoo, and I'm really happy to say that. Alright everyone, that was my quick overview of the brand new Planet Zoo Conservation Pack. I definitely would recommend checking it out and buying it. It's a really solid pack overall. I appreciate the unique scenery, even though it's on the lighter side, it's still very good to have. The animals themselves are very cool. Maybe not the most game-changing animals except, they're, except for the gibbon, but it's still a really solid selection of animals. And best of all, my absolute favorite thing about this pack is that they did not skip on the new soundtrack. I was very upset when they skipped on it with the Wetlands Animal Pack, but they did not do it here. We are back to soundtracks, and I would also definitely recommend checking out the new Conservation Pack soundtrack. It's a beautiful one, my personal favorite being the Siamang Shuffle. Um, but yeah, overall, really solid pack. Again, I would recommend checking it out. It is worth your money, but I can also understand if some people need to wait for the price to go down. You know, the scenery not being the most lucrative ever, I kind of understand, but it also makes sense to get, especially for those gibbons, the backstage props. It's a very beautiful, original pack, and I hope that we do get more stuff like this in the future from Frontier. I suspect we will. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you thought about the pack in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.